red spider mites, the best thing in the world is to spray seaweed. Seaweed will, will get rid of them off a plant as well as kelthane or any of the toxic chemicals. But if you don't fix the problem, they'll come right back. And the problem is overwatering or underwatering. Not enough, not, you don't have the proper water getting into the, um, the plant. And you've got to fix that or the red spider mites are going to come right back. But you can take them off the plant with seaweed. On uh, oaks, a lot of times you'll have these little slugs on the backside. Those are saw flies. And they're hit and run artists. They're going to hit, they're going to do some damage in little spots here and there on the plant, and then they're going to be gone. I don't really worry about them too much. Just spray compost teas and things like that. Bagworms, I had a big argument with one of the people that was listening to the show one time, and he decided to email me and told me that I just didn't know what I was talking about, that the, that the bagworms could, in fact, continue to eat after they had attached to the tree. Well, that's physically impossible because once the female stops pulling that bag around and attaches and hangs down like that, it's, it's impossible for her to feed anymore. She can't. And the only thing you can do at this point is to pull them off and throw them in the compost pile, and which I would recommend that you do. Smashing them first, make sure they don't crawl, get out and crawl off again. I don't think they can, but you might as well smash them, throw them in the compost pile. When in the spring they're still moving around and they're pulling these small little bags and they look like a little teepee marching around on the surface of the leaf. That's the young female bagworm and they are feeding. They're doing a lot of damage at that point. That's when you can spray the plant oils or the BT products and, and control them. Again, it's a classic insect indicating that your plant's in stress. So figure out what you're doing wrong with fertilizer, water, plant too deep in the ground, you planted the plant someplace it doesn't like to be or whatever it is, or after you control the pests, they're going to come right back. Those of you that are vegetable growers, that's what squash bugs look like before they hatch. The eggs are the color of BBs and almost as big as BBs. And the thing to do is just inspect the back side of the leaves from time to time. And if they're there, just crush them with your finger. Once they hatch, they're very difficult to control. Uh, the plant oils, again, will help you. And the, uh, the same thing we use to drench fire ant mounds will work, too. The orange oil, molasses, and compost tea. That's what the young uh, squash bugs look like. Squash vine borers are just as tough or maybe even tougher. That's a scale. That's cottony cushion scale. Another. Another indicator insect, if you have cottony cushion scale on your plants, your plant is unhappy. It's saying, stop doing something that you're doing. Now, you can kill them with the plant oils, with horticultural oil, various things. But if you don't stop what has been done wrong, change your cultural practices or whatever is, is causing the plant to be in stress, they will come right back. Slugs and snails. I don't have a big problem with slugs and snails, and I think it's because my garden has now rich biodiversity, and I see a few from time to time, but very, very little. I think that when you have them pop up, the hot pepper sprays, uh, the plant oil sprays will kill them, things like that. Throwing hot pepper on the ground uh, along with cedar, all those things help. But once you have good balance, they, they are not that big a problem.